Let's look at a few different things you could do with objects. So let's say I have these two switches. I can group them together and the, the icon that you have for grouping changes and then now these are grouped together so I shouldn't be able to move them. But notice they're not at the same bottom level. So what I can do again is group them together and then come up to this icon and we want to align the bottom edges. Now they're both together. So the next thing I can do is add a decoration. So if you right click, go to decorations, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to place a box around these two switches. And you got to get on the right point. You see that little expanding arrow, but now the box is covering those two items. So what I need to do next is make sure the box is selected. See so it has this little marquee around it. And then you can go to uh, move back and now the box moves back. The only issue is that if I move this box, it doesn't move with the switches. So what I can do is group things together. So I put a select all these items. Notice they have each a marquee. I'm going to go up to group, groups together. Now when I move this back and forth, it all stays together. Let's have a look at some of the things you can do with a waveform chart. One of the first things I want to do is to go up to view and there's this tool palette that you can bring up and I can change, for example, that background. If I click on this set color, you do have to be a bit careful with this, but let's say I wanted the background to be yellow. I would select this area. I think I have to stop first, select this area and it paints it yellow, but I can go back up and just paint it very light gray and whatever I touch in there changes that color. If I want to change the line, but first let's go back to automatic tool. That green icon means automatic tool. And then I can right click on this background, go to properties and where it says plots, I can change the color of that plot to red. Okay. I've done that. And if I want to change the scale, same thing here, go to properties and scales. And you definitely want to have it to auto scale, but you have to change this to the Y axis and make sure that it's not auto scale, turn auto scale off, have minimum zero to five, then click okay. If you want to see a digital display, go to visible items, digital display. And I have that on the screen. So if I run this and I cover and uncover my photo cell, you see that voltage changing and you have it on this digital display as well. One of the other things that I can do is to change the properties of some of the icons on the screens or the objects. So for example, this LED, I can change it so that instead of it being green when it's on, I can change it to red and maybe when it's off, I can change it to this blue color. So now when I run the program, I think I'm going to be pressing one of these buttons that goes green and gray, but this one goes green and blue. So that's a way to change that. The next thing you want to do is quite often uh, the numerical values that you see on the screen, they might not be the size that you want. So I can stop this program. And one of the features is to drag this a little bit bigger, but if you want to change the size, it's this pull down window that you use. So you can change the, the type of character that you have or the font. You can go up to here and let's just come up with uh, this one. So it changes that font a little bit. If you want to change the size, you want to make it bigger. The only annoying part is you have to select each one of these every time you want to make a change. So let's say I want to change to bold. That would be under style. Let's make it bold. And let's say I want to change the color. So color right here. Now I've got a different color. So make it big enough so people can read it. And same thing with the uh, chart, make them large enough. You've got a whole page to work with. So I've got this chart a little bit bigger now. The other thing that you want to make sure that you have is we should only go up to about two digits of precision. So if you right click on here and go to display format, normally you want this to be two digits of precision. So make sure a few things here that it's set to floating point, two digits of precision, 
and this should be precision type because you have significant digits as well. And then make sure hide trailing zeros is turned off. Okay, so floating point, this turned off, two digits and digits of precision. And instead of getting a whole bunch of numbers, you just get two. Same thing here, I can change the size because by default, if I come up here, go to my block diagram and just add another numerical indicator. Now let's see, we'll do that right here. Well, let's just put one on the screen. So numeric indicator, we have it right here. And if I connect it, go back to the block diagram and you can press control E to go back and forth. And I'm going to connect this to maybe right here. Okay, it's now connected. Let's try running. And notice how many digits you get here. Let's make it a little bit bigger as well. So we'll stop up here. I'm going to select that. I'm going to make it much bigger. So size 36, you can really see that number. Sometimes you have to make the window a little bit bigger. But our meter will not measure to that level of precision. So let's say I wanted to change this so it matches that. I'd right click on the number, go to display format, and this is where I select floating point, two digits of precision, turn this off and change it to digits of precision. Now when I run it, that's what you have.